Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Back in December, I was part of a group of people who witnessed and recorded the 24 hour sun in Antarctica. And this has caused quite a stir amongst people who think the Earth is flat. Because a 24 hour sun in Antarctica shouldn't exist on a flat Earth. Well, let me clarify that, because it could exist on a flat Earth, for example, if you had an AE map that was centred on the South Pole. The problem they have, though, is that there is also a 24-hour sun in the north, and the sun in the north appears to travel in the opposite direction than it does in the south. Now, if you were to pick pretty much any city in the world as a starting location, if you wanted to go to the Arctic, then you would head north. If you wanted to go to the Antarctic, then you would head 180 degrees in the opposite direction. But both locations experience a 24-hour circling sun, and yet there is no 24-hour sun for the thousands of miles between them. And they circle in opposite directions, which all together is a major problem for flat Earth. So, since we went to Antarctica and showed that the 24-hour sun there is real, Flat Earthers have basically been having one of four responses. One, they go out of their way to find anything within our footage that they can use to try and claim it's all fake and just dismiss it. Two, they completely ignore it and act like it doesn't matter. Kind of in a, if they don't talk about it, maybe people will forget it sort of way. Three, they acknowledge that it doesn't work with a flat Earth and therefore the Earth can't be flat. There's actually been a surprising number of them take that option. But then there's option four, which is accept there is a 24-hour sun in Antarctica, but try to offer an explanation for how it might work on a flat Earth. Now, there have been a couple of people go with option four, but the only explanations that I've seen that seem to be able to offer any hint of being demonstrable are either reflection straight off the firmament or Joseph Hanvey's model that has something he's calling a superfluid ceiling. Of the superfluid, which the two-way mirror represents the superfluid ceiling itself. When I move around Capricorn West, you get that apparent anti-motion. Now when I come, when I move the camera down, which I'm gonna do now, West, south, east, north. This is for the people in the south. The notion with this one seemingly being that you have the firmament and within that is the superfluid ceiling and the sun is above this superfluid. And that what we're seeing is the sunlight through the superfluid, which he says would cause it to appear to circle in the opposite direction as we saw in Antarctica. But there are several glaring issues with these ideas, which I'll cover and then I'm going to go through some tests that I did in Antarctica to show why the sun can't be a reflection. Firstly, Joe says that the sun, when viewed from below, is circling the opposite direction to how he's moving the light above, even if we can't actually see both above and below at the same time to verify this. But even if that is the case, the sun would still be seen to be circling in that direction for everybody who is below this superfluid ceiling, which wouldn't create opposite directions of rotation north versus south unless the north is above the superfluid ceiling, which is nine-tenths of the way towards creating a globe. Another issue I can see from his demonstrations is that the sun heavily distorts when it gets to the outer edges, which is caused by the light reaching its highest amount of refraction. This would mean that in Antarctica, the sun would appear as a circle when it was north of us, but stretch out significantly when it was towards the south. Another problem that we can see is that when the sun is where he says it would be for us to see when we're looking north, there's a faint double reflection of the sun in the south, meaning we would have seen two suns in Antarctica, which we didn't. Plus, when he then moves the light to supposedly south, there's a clear glow just off camera, which again would mean that we should have seen multiple suns in the sky. 
And another major problem is that the sun circles above this ceiling once a day, 365 days a year. And yet Antarctica not only experiences three months of endless daylight and a circling sun, but also three months of endless darkness. The same as the Antarctic does, but a half a year apart. And I am not seeing what mechanism would prevent the sun from reflecting onto Antarctica during those three months of darkness. Then there's also the issue that reflections create mirrored images, which you might be able to get around with the sun if it was just a blank circle in the sky with no definitive features. But one of the things I did whilst in Antarctica was to take photos of the sunspots every minute for 24 full hours. And at no point did the sunspots appear to flip, as you would see with some sort of reflection. They remained in the same orientation throughout. And not only that, there were people all around the world taking photos of the sun at the same time. And for them, none of the sunspots appeared flipped to what we saw. But they did appear rotated compared to what we saw. And the amount of rotation varied depending on the observer's latitude. But even if we were to ignore all of these and say there is some sort of mechanism within the superfluid ceiling that can reflect the sun without mirroring it and reflect it in certain places only at certain times of the year and reflect it in such a way that allows it to separate and merge perfectly with the other suns without being visible simultaneously and all without causing any distortion or loss of clarity to the sun. If we ignore all of that, there's still a huge fundamental problem with this idea of there being reflections of the sun within the firmament, which is that direct sunlight is not polarized. However, reflected sunlight is polarized. And I was able to test this whilst in Antarctica. You see, a tool that many photographers are familiar with is this, a polarizing filter, which allows photographers to filter polarized light. Now, a polarized filter will only allow polarized light through when their polarizations match up to each other. If you turn the filter to a different angle, then it will restrict the light from being able to pass through it. Now, why would photographers need this, you might be asking? Well, most notably, polarizing filters are used to cut down reflections i.e. if you're photographing outside on a bright day and there are windows or water in your scene that are just showing bright reflections of everything, you can use a polarizing filter to cut those reflections right down and actually be able to see through the window or water because the reflected sunlight is polarized. So by turning this filter, you can find an angle that will block that polarized light from entering the camera. And in preparation for our Antarctic trip, there was a big effort to try and consider any and all possible explanations that people might try and come up with to explain a 24-hour sun so that we could do tests while we were there to debunk them. So I actually took some of these polarizing filters with me on the trip specifically to test if the sunlight ever became polarized by it being reflected in some way off of the firmament. Here is a test I did of this at Union Glacier Camp. So there is the sun. It's in a sort of easterly direction. There is a reflection of the sun off the side of this truck window. If I place the CPL filter over it and I rotate it, you can see the glare from the sun reduces and then increases depending on its relation to the polarization from the filter. If I continue rotating this and I'll bring it in line with the sun, there is no change in the glare. So you saw there that the polarizing filter was able to cut down the amount of light from the reflection of the sun in the glass but it had no impact on the sun in the sky, which shows that that sun is not in any way a reflection. However, that video was taken during the afternoon when the sun was in a northeasterly direction. So I also repeated the same test during the early hours. Okay, so the time is uh, 12.35 a.m. This is past midnight. We are still in Union Glacier and I'm going to do 
another circular polarizing test. So, excuse me, turn. So, as before, a reflection of the sun dims when the polarizer is used. However, the sun in the sky does not. Now, just for clarity, I also did the exact same test on the sun whilst we were in Punta Arenas by using a polarizer on the reflections off of a hotel window, as well as testing the sun itself to confirm that the sun behaved the same way in a populated area as it did in Antarctica. And some might say that those are reflections off of glass and not fluid like Joe's model, and that perhaps reflections off of fluid are somehow different. So I also did a test on a glass of water to show that reflections off of fluid behave exactly the same as with glass. In short, any reflections of the sun would be polarized, which means that any reflected sun would have been impacted by the polarizing filter, and yet I tested for polarization multiple times during the trip, and there was none. So unfortunately for flat earthers, none of their explanations for the midnight sun in Antarctica can use a mechanism of the sun being somehow reflected off of things because we tested for it while we were there and there wasn't any. And that's gonna draw this video to a close. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.